Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. The Cats win their season opener 41-6 over UT Martin. It was not pretty at times. There were questions in the first half about how is the offense looking, some other things. The one thing that cannot be questioned tonight is the defense. So let's just start there because that was an overwhelming positive. They, for the most part, did exactly what we expected them to do. The only things that prevented them from getting a third straight shutout against an FCS opponent was... Toby Asensami almost had another sack, but Kincaid Dent kind of wrangled his way out of it, found a guy open downfield. That set up the lone score early on in the game, and then Jace Brown's fumble on the opening kickoff of the second half set up the other field goal. But other than that, the defense played their butts off tonight, and it's exciting to see the edge guys start to make noise again, which is something that was missing from last year. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to – be disappointed about when it comes to the defense. Uh, a missed tackle there by Toby for, led to a big play. And beyond that, man, it's really hard to complain about anything. You know, as well as Toby Osinsami played, and, and he played really, really well, even in really limited snaps, because he only played mostly on third down. And he probably has two and a half sacks if he corrals that one uh, that got away from him. I thought by far the best one was Desmond Purnell. That guy played his butt off if that's the Desmond Purnell you get for 12 games he's on the all big 12 first team and it's probably not even close so I thought that was a big story I like you said a few of those defensive ends started to pop through Ryan Davis made a couple plays in the fourth or in the second half Chidi Obi Eisor made one in the open field that was pretty impressive um, while shedding excuse me while shedding a block so a few guys Brem Mott played a good game uh Travis Bates got in there. You know, they're making headway there at defensive end. Uh, Toby Osinsami is going to get the headlines, but there was other guys to make the play. And I thought Desmond Purnell was probably the best player on the defense. And because UT Martin was very content running the ball, regardless of the score and situation, um, secondary really didn't get tested, or and they gave up less than 100 yards in the passing. Yeah, I, that would maybe be the only thing that you – you take away from this is the team was not good at creating turnovers last year. They didn't create any tonight. There was the fumble that UT Martin was fortunate with the bounce to get back on top of, but you're right. There weren't a ton of downfield throws. I mean, in your head, you can probably only count like four or five of them that gave the secondary a real chance to be tested. And for the most part, they answered the call there. So the defense as advertised for K-State and a couple of those guys, I mean, I think Des Purnell and Toby Asensami are guys that, Everybody has said in this offseason, for K-State to be at their peak, those guys play at their highest level possible. They showed it tonight. Offensively, not exactly what K-State fans would have been looking for. It was slow going early. They scored on their second possession of the game, but that was after a three and out. And it was just it felt weird in that first half. They had to settle for a field goal at the end of it. There were a couple times where I understand what Chris Kleiman was doing. He was playing it smart. He realized UT Martin's not moving the ball. Their punter has had a bad punt, a punt blocked. Like, let's play the field position game. But it felt lackluster going into the half. And a lot of that is on Avery Johnson. There were some shaky throws. There were maybe some misses. The wide receivers appeared to be non-existent at times again. And then I think there was a good amount of, one, Connor Riley trying to find his footing as the offensive coordinator and how he's going to call plays. But number two... He's having to battle with knowing they play real opponents the next two weeks. This one, you could be a little bit more plain Jane. And I think he struggled to find that balance early. They came out of the half. Chris Kleiman just came in and admitted in the postgame that he was not pleased with the first half offense. I think he challenged a lot of guys. I think they answered the call for the most part in the second half where they were better. Yeah. Now, I will say that I kind of, you know, warned people throughout the offseason that it wasn't going to be all sunshine and rainbows, especially on the offensive side of the ball early on in the season. Too many first-year contributors. You're asking to be impactful players and all at the same time. I thought maybe a bright spot might have been the offensive line. Didn't really have any quibbles with how they performed. But the passing game just never took off. There was a handful of wide receivers that were much more non-existent than you would have liked. Avery Johnson, a couple inaccurate balls. Avery Johnson, a couple times where I thought he didn't find the open receiver. You know, he had the bad interception. He just never found a groove until maybe later on in the third quarter where I thought he started to hit a stride. 
There's a couple beautiful, beautiful touchdowns schemed up, one to Braden Lofton, one to Dylan Edwards uh, in the second half as well. For what I, my takeaway is that they're, they really wanted to test themselves in areas that they know that they need work on. That's why they were kind of, you know, hammering out the passing game. They didn't want to use Avery's legs because this is not a game really to do that. And that'll certainly open up other things in the offense when they do unleash that part of the offense. But so if they wanted to run the ball, it's like, here you go, DJ Giddens. And of course, he did his thing. You got to think about this, though. It's something I kept telling myself. If they wanted to run read option as much as yeah. they typically would be comfortable doing, um, they scored probably 63, 70 points. Yeah. Again, they were trying to test themselves through the air. And for the most, for you know, over half the game, it didn't really go well. So if you're going to have a, a concern, that's what it would be. Um, I need assurances probably a little bit more now in the passing game moving forward. But I would still say my panic meter is still zero because I don't, I didn't expect it to look pretty early. Now, I maybe didn't expect the struggles to be as intense as they were in the first half, but I'd rather finish, uh, finish well than start well and fade. Yeah, and if your name isn't Mason Voth and you're a glass half full type of person, you would say, well, look at what Oregon did tonight, only beating Idaho 24 to 14. Look at what Texas Tech did tonight, going to overtime and winning 52 to 51 over Abilene Christian. They're probably just fortunate that Abilene Christian decided to go for the win in overtime. A good example actually might be Michigan because they're mm-hmm. inserting so many new pieces yep. on the offense that have very little experience. The one guy that does have a lot of experience for them was a running back in Donovan Edwards, and they look really clunky tonight against Fresno State. So that's probably a perfect um, comparison would be those two. Yeah, there are a lot of teams that that had some of those early season struggles, and uh, it, it is it is wise to remember as much as it can be hard to do that. Yeah, the college football, there's no preseason. You got to come out and work on these things in game because it's different than in practice, and this is the best time to do it. Now, you would expect a better performance next week against Tulane, but that's going to be a tough little trip. I mean, 11 a.m. kickoff, it'll probably be hot and humid down there, which that's not saying that it wasn't here tonight. Probably fortunate on the temperature, but the humidity was still here. Um, I, I think moving forward, we're probably – going to have to keep a closer eye on the Avery Johnson passing situation than what was originally thought just because it was so wonky tonight. And the receivers, Mm -hmm. because even the best part of the passing game was Jace Brown was there, but then then you're you're pointing to Braden Lofton and Dylan Edwards. So Jaden Jackson, his touches were, I think, two carries. Keegan Johnson's his touch, I think, was one carry. Dante Cephas got a few (laughs) few targets, but those passes weren't completely complete Keegan Johnson didn't even get a target I don't think so you need to see more out of the wide receivers in the downfield passing game yeah the running backs were good tonight though DJ Giddens like you'd expect 13 carries 124 yards Dylan Edwards five carries 43 yards and then uh, he had a touchdown on the ground he also had the touchdown catch where he ended up uh, on the night two catches 19 yards and that would be the other thing offensively I didn't think there was enough Dylan Edwards in the first half. Once you recognize that you were having some struggles, I thought you got to give a dynamic guy like that the ball a little bit more. I think he ended with only four touches in the first half. They got him the ball more in the second half. They started to move it a little bit better. It also opened things up. We saw the bomb to Jace Brown, which proves that type of throw is there for Avery Johnson. That type of playmaking is there for the receivers for K-State, but they got to continue to kind of put it all together. And, you know, you think at the end of the day, it's still a lot of guys, like we talked about, in new roles and responsibilities. Um, But certainly no reason to give the offense an overwhelming passing grade tonight. They probably they probably get a C of some sorts. The offensive line, like you said, though, deserves a major shout-out uh, because they played really well. Sam Heck maybe had a couple of iffy snaps, but for the most part, no complaints, and the, the protection was good as well. Special teams, we saw some mixed results there from special teams. They had the block punt for a touchdown. That is something that they've been really good at under Chris Kleiman. The return game, we saw some flashes, but maybe their best kick return of the night ended with a Jace Brown fumble. Jace Brown fumbles it. Dylan Edwards let a punt go that he should have went and caught, and Chris Tennant knocked the kickoff out of bounds. So those are three glaring errors, in my opinion. Yeah, so we'll see how it all looks when we get down to New Orleans next week. Nonetheless, the Cats are, are winners 41-6 to tonight. They're 1-0. Uh, that's better than what some Big 12 teams can say. 
and even teams throughout the country that beat their FCS opponent that were supposed to be okay or better than okay, probably not feeling very comfortable about their wins. The Cats figure it out. They get it done. Time to improve, and we'll see what they have in store next week at Tulane for game number two. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more coverage of the Cats and thoughts from tonight's victory over UT Martin, go to On3, find kstateonline.com, and also stay right here on the KSO YouTube page for highlights, press conferences, and much more. So we're out of here. Back again tomorrow night for the Sunday show.